All right, the SACP General Secretary, Dr. Bladen Zamandi, is uh, going to be delivering the SACP 26th Joe Slovo commemoration uh, statement. Joe Slovo was the SACP national chairperson and member of the SACP Political Bureau and Central Committee at uh, the time of his death on the 6th of January 1995. He was also a member of the ANC's National Executive Committee and the first Minister of Housing in the first democratic administration led by Nelson Mandela as the president. Let's take you there now live. Also delayed when we were trying to help uh, the secretary general of the ANC, Comrade Ace, to connect. And uh, the last person is Comrade Begin Jalin Jali and the SABC. However, we are ready to start now. Uh, I hope that uh, my memorandum to the government of the Republic of South Africa uh, to take technological development of the country and connectivity more seriously than we are right now has reached uh, uh, the right place and we will begin to see changes because COVID-19 impact on us. We can't do things the way we used to do them before. Uh, Technological development is is the way to go. Without uh, any further waste of time, I will ask uh, uh, Dr. Stempiso Bengu to allow uh, those who wish to record the session to do so and uh, to also start sharing the session on the SACP Facebook page, because not everyone could uh, join as we reached a maximum, but we still have space for eight people on the attendees side. Let me hand over the program to the people it belongs to. Uh, Comrade Joyce Moloi Moroba is the national treasurer of the SABC. She will be our uh, of the SACP, not of the SAPC. Of the SACP, of course. Thanks uh, for that uh, tongue twisting correction. I saw her uh, 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 protesting. Uh, I have immediately uh, accepted the memorandum and delivered on your demands, uh, GS. Comrade Joyce? Yeah, no, thank you very much, Comrade Alex, and thanks for everyone who has joined. A very good day to everyone. Of course, we will really start with a a big apology in terms of the delay. Uh, We normally pride ourselves with starting on time as a communist party, 12 o'clock should be 12, and we sincerely apologize and hope we'll catch up with the program. Good day to everyone and uh, compliments of this new year, which is so difficult and painful, whereby we are attacked by this uh, invisible virus and which is gaining momentum on a daily basis. Uh, I would like to indicate that uh, we are meeting here today for our annual uh, commemoration of Comrade Joe Slovo, which is the 26th uh, annual commemoration today. Um, We normally hold this event at the Avalon Cemetery, where we have buried Comrade Joe Slovo. It was his place of preference to be buried, where the people are, and we normally go there. Unfortunately, due to the conditions that is surrounding us, it was impossible for us to have a celebration at the Avalon Cemetery. We are holding it virtually, and uh, sorry for the delay, We are also uh, very grateful to start with this event at the beginning of the year after we come from our festive season because it is a revival, a reminder of who we are, you know, a revival of ourselves as revolutionaries, you know, where we have to sharpen our spears in terms of who we are, what we want to do, where we want to to, to get to, especially uh, when we think about Comrade Joe Slovo, a person who was a theorist, who'd give uh, an intellectual, who'd give direction in various levels. I must say, he was such an educator. He would always be relevant to the times. And, you know, at the moment we are attacked by the coronavirus. 
he would be interpreting these current times in a way that made sense to us as revolutionaries. And uh, we actually miss uh, comrades like uh, Joe Slovo as people who actually inspired us to be where we are uh, today. I must say again, comrades, while we are commemorating the 26th anniversary, uh, as the Communist Party, we are also launching the white ribbon. Uh, comrades might, might realize that some of us are having white ribbons. This is against gender-based violence. This is a campaign that is, is, is actually launched by the Joe Slovo Foundation, COSATU and the South African Communist Party all together. So we are also uh, launching this uh, 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 gender-based, uh, anti-gender-based uh, 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 violence a campaign uh, which is actually initiated and is going to be driven by the SACP, by COSATU and the Joe Slovo Foundation. Uh, I will uh, uh, quickly uh, take the, the, the comrades through the program, but maybe before that, as I indicated the difficult times that we are in, the scourge of the coronavirus, the difficulty and currently now we can see that South Africa might be isolated from the entire world due to the current developments. I will actually request that we take just a moment of silence, uh, even though visually, uh, just in remembrance of all those that have already left us, those that are in hospital at this current time. All the messages that we're getting, you know, of our relatives, of our friends, comrades, who are passing on on daily basis. You know, we would like to take this uh, moment of silence if I request all comrades just a moment and then we can proceed with our program. Mm. May their soul rest in peace. Comrades, uh, quite quickly, because we are actually behind time now, I'll take you through the program. Uh, we will be um, getting our welcome because we are hosted largely, uh, you know, as I talked about Avalon, by Gauteng province uh, by this event. And then comrade uh, Jacob Mamabolo, who is the Gauteng provincial uh, secretary, will be uh, actually doing that welcome. That will be followed by the solidarity message. And those mess messages will be from the YCL of South Africa, done by comrade Dinego. It will be done by Kosatu, Comrade Begin Jalinjali. It will be done by the ANC. We have the leader uh, of, of, of the, the SG of the ANC who's leading the delegation of the African uh, uh, National Congress, Comrade Ace Mahashulo, who will be doing the message of support on behalf of the ANC. And um, thereafter, we will have the launch of the White Ribbon that will be done by Comrade Martin Doni uh, for the own behalf of the Joe Slovo Foundation. And thereafter, we will have our main message from the General Secretary of the South African Communist Party, Comrade uh, uh, Blade in the Monday. And then we will just, uh, after that, have an adjourning uh, message. I need to indicate that we do have a list of various uh, representatives that are here from our alliance partners. From the, the ANC, we do have Comrade Ace leading the delegation that constitute of Comrade Lindue, of, of the, uh, the following Comrades, Comrade Lindue, Masego, Lindue Zulu, Lindue Sisulu, Lin, uh, Comrade Jeff Hatebe, Comrades Nongula Mugonyana, Tabang Magwetla, Mondu Ngungubele, and Mutsaha, and I heard from Comrade Mutsaha Comrade Mbalula is also there. Comrade Njalinjali leading the, the Kwasatu, we will get the delegation that is also here. We know that many people wanted to join, but unfortunately due to uh, the technology and all the developments that are there, it became uh, difficult and we became also late. And therefore uh, I'm, I will continue to introduce all those that are part of, of this today. At this point of time, uh, on time, comrades, at this point, without any waste of time, can I then request comrade Jacob Mamabolo, the Provincial Secretary for Gauteng, to take uh, this visual podium. Uh, thank you very much, uh, comrade uh, Joyce, our treasurer. Um, 
Uh, very briefly, comrades, and without a waste of time, acknowledging time constraints, let me uh, extend on behalf of our PEC uh, compliments of the new year revolutionary greetings um, to the Joslovo family, um, to our general secretary leading the entire uh, leadership of the central committee, um, <clears throat> and of course the office bearers of uh, the national office bearers of the party. Um, the Young Communist League uh, National Secretary and the entire leadership of the YCL. Um, all members of the Central Committee, Provincial Secretaries. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to sincerely acknowledge and appreciate the presence of the Secretary General of the ANC, Comrade Ace Mahashud and all the leaders of the African National Congress as acknowledged. Um, all the, uh, the leadership of COSATU, um, led uh, by Comrade Pekin Charlie, Charlie um, uh, all of them uh, are acknowledged. All international and fraternal organizations on the platform, um, the Progressive Youth Alliance, um, and of course, uh, uh, all comrades uh, present, uh, the media houses, and uh, hoping that uh, I have not failed to observe all protocol, uh, but I've acknowledged all the revolutionary and fraternal organizations and comrades, uh, and all comrades who have managed to join in. You are sincerely welcome. Um, on this uh, virtual platform, we have already, on a light note with the GS and comrades uh, said, uh, we are actually in, in Avalon Cemetery uh, virtually, and uh, we hope comrades you'll find comfort wherever you are, um, and uh, your presence is highly welcome. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, let me uh, bring it back to you. Thank you. Where's Comrade Joyce? Comrade Joyce is muted. Sorry, Comrades, I thought I'm really talking to the meeting. My apologies. Uh, completely unusual for us uh, not to have revolutionary songs. But at the, at the moment, because we're all so late, I will immediately progress with the program. Thanks, Comrade Mamabulu, for the welcome and also representing us at the Avalon Cemetery. Um, we will immediately move to the next item, which is the Young Communist League of South Africa. Uh, I will call or I will request Comrade Tinigon uh, Dini to take the podium, uh, the National Secretary of the Young Communist League. Over to Comrade Tinigon. Uh, thank you, uh, Comrade Denti, uh, Comrade Joyce, uh, the program director today. And uh, indeed, uh, greetings to uh, the General Sec and the entire Central Committee of the party, um, our National Chairperson, uh, Comrade Mabuse, and the entire National Committee of the YCL, um, the SG of uh, the ANC, and the entire uh, delegation of the African National Congress, uh, Comrade Ace, uh, the GS of COSATU, uh, Comrade uh, Begin Jalinjali, and the entire CEC of COSATU, our PYA components, and uh, most importantly, even uh, our media personnel that have joined us, uh, structures of the party and the alliance and the movement as a whole. Uh, indeed, uh, compliments of uh, the new year from uh, the 5th Congress National Committee of the YCL, 
and indeed uh, we have adapted, I think, uh, to the new normal. So it will not just be that while it's for the first time, uh, we find ourselves commemorating uh, this giant of our movement uh, virtually, but uh, the platform we've been used to it uh, for quite some time now. Uh, but indeed, today we are here to celebrate the life and times and commemorate one of the outstanding uh, revolutionaries and intellectual par excellence, a theoretician of uh, our movement and the former GS, of course, and the former national chairperson of the SACP, that indeed uh, this year uh, it's celebrating a milestone, uh, 100 years of uh, its existence. And uh, while indeed we celebrate and commemorate uh, this centenary of the party, we need to be able to remember that we'll be again celebrating the 60th anniversary since the formation of uh, uh, the joint operation of controversies uh, by the party and the ANC. And indeed, we'll not uh, be able to speak about uh, Comrade Joslov and not reflect uh, the role that uh, he played, obviously, with other revolutionaries as a chief of staff and even commander of Mkonto Wesizu. And indeed, as we continue to note uh, those two key milestones, it's important for us to make sure that uh, we get inspired uh, by his uh, revolutionary work and his theory that he has left us with uh, to take the struggle forward and advance and deepen uh, our national democratic uh, revolution indeed. And obviously, as we celebrate uh, this day and commemorate it, we have to continue uh, to reflect a bit on some of uh, his theoretic work and uh, analyze the current situation based on uh, the lenses of Comrade Joslovo, in particular inspired uh, by one of uh, the outstanding uh, theoretical papers that uh, he wrote, the South African Working Class and the National Democratic Revolution. And I think it's very much important to take care uh, from that particular paper and understand uh, that as we celebrate uh, the centenary of the party, uh, let us reflect on some of the work that uh, Comrade Joslovo indeed has reflected on. And indeed, uh, Comrade uh, Chair, we bring this outstanding theoretical work of Comrade Slovo, which obviously is the theory of our revolution, and it explains three things, that our message today is anchored around it as the YCL, and obviously, firstly, is to respond to consistent uh, base letter texts sometimes that we find uh, by factional groups in, in the Congress movement itself, and whom, whenever it suits them, sometimes questions the relevance of the party and whether the party is still committed to the struggle of socialism. And again, uh, attempts sometimes when the party uh, internally reflects on the state of the NDR, uh, tend to be thought as if the party maybe is discussing to leave the alliance. Those are some of the issues that as today we reflect uh, on the life and times of Comrade Slovo. I think uh, this paper responded very well to some of uh, these uh, uh, narratives that have always came uh, on top of the party. And the rhetoric that the party indeed has deviated from its historical political mission, which obviously it will not be correct. And indeed, uh, on the immediate, as part of uh, responding to some of these statements, uh, it's very much uh, important uh, to uh, reflect uh, on some of the work that uh, Comrade Roslovo left us with. When you open court, he says, we believe the working class is both indispensable part and leading force of such a liberation alliance. But its relations with other classes and strata cannot be conditional on the acceptance by them of socialist aims. Class struggle in a period of capitalist hegemony is in the long run a political struggle for the ultimate winning power by the working class. But the content of this class struggle does not remain fixed for all time. It is dictated by the concrete situation at a given historical moment. We cannot confine the meaning of the class struggle to the, those rare moments 
when the immediate winning of a socialist power is on the agenda, when workers engage in the national struggle to destroy race domination, they are surely at the same time engaging in class struggle. Close quote. These are some of the reflections that indeed we continue uh, to inspire us and continue to wish to be like a comrade Joslo and make sure that uh, being a theoretician were able then to put into practice uh, some of this work. The latter equally seeks to address the second point that we want to address as a reflection of the life of Comrade Slovo and the centenary evolution of our party today. This is the question, obviously, on the electoral contest and popular power. As uh, Slovo would argue, that uh, national domination is maintained by a ruling class whose state apparatus protects the economic interest and social uh, privileges of all classes. It denies the aspiration of African people towards a single nationhood, and it's in its place attempts to perpetuate tribalism and ethnicity. And indeed, this and a host of related practices are the visible daily manifestations of national dominations. We have come to a point where we have to isolate the question of electoral contest from the existence of the alliance because we continue to believe as the YCL that uh, this uh, liberation alliance has always been then it has existed uh, beyond uh, the question of uh, electoral contest and how it relates to the state but is to continue to indeed uh, play a part in liberating our people economically and making sure that again, we unite our people against uh, some of the historical injustices that we faced of ethnic nationalism and other aspects that have been there. And this does not deny the fact that indeed then state and popular power can be contested through the alliance. But this will enable us to reflect clearly on what should be the posture of the party, especially as it celebrates its centenary. And uh, obviously to analyze the domination nationally that is maintained by the ruling class, whose state apparatus protects the economic interest and social privileges for the few. And obviously it has even somehow led to the degeneration of our movement uh, in some cycles moving forward. But one thing again that uh, Comrade Chair towards our conclusion that inspires us was one of uh, the theoretical uh, responses uh, made uh, by our sitting general, uh, Comrade uh, Blade, uh, in a response to a paper uh, during the era of negotiations. And uh, one thing that he argued was that, uh, uh, open quote, if our strategic perspective and line is that negotiations are a site of struggle and that the process should be mass driven, then our theoretical starting point cannot be negotiations per se, close quote. And indeed today, we wish to bring this outstanding perspective by the GS to the current political epoch and argue that uh, if our strategic perspective and line is that uh, the alliance and the revolution is, uh, remains a site of struggle, or even the state itself, then our starting point should be the question of state and popular power. That cannot be the alliance per se, but the process must continue to be mass driven. And indeed, Comrade just properly located this point uh, very well. And I think it's very much important that today, as we continue to reflect on the life and times of Comrade Slov, understand the importance of the party to continue to build a popular front in various aspects and continue to understand that uh, we need a radical structural economic transformation that will be able then uh, be a way of transferring even some of the power to the, our people and continuing to make sure that the working class as the motive force of the revolution continues to play an important role to this uh, revolution of theirs rather than us allowing a neoliberal austerity uh, agenda to defeat us and even now wants to direct the posture of the movement uh, as a whole. And indeed, the third point that we wish to address as our last point of which uh, it relates to the current moment that we find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic. We recently stated that we find ourselves as a nation 
merely because socioeconomic challenges of our society and the lack of moral leadership sometimes by the movement leading to a degenerated social behavior in the society. It is not the virus indeed alone that has caused the surge. And uh, this transmission of the virus amongst people, it has been caused uh, by the social behavior, as we have said. And again, obviously, some of uh, the historical injustices were uh, there is obviously congestion of economic activities only in the towns and the cities. And obviously towards a uh, festive, the working class is always compelled to find themselves taking the little that over the 12 months have exchanged uh, their labor for uh, to go back to deep rural places uh, to can be able to spend time with their families and spend these uh, resources. And obviously this is what has caused uh, even some of uh, this uh, uh, search uh, to continue to be so stubborn and continue to spread. And obviously these are some of the issues that we need to work together as a movement uh, to fight against. In conclusion, what we are trying to say was clearly saying that it's not the virus alone that is killing the people. It is both the economic system and the social behavior in our society. And that obviously we need to appreciate and obviously as a liberation alliance uh, using our own uh, state to make sure that uh, we change the situation that it's facing our working class, obviously, and build capacity of the state, indeed, if we are still committed uh, for a developmental state. And indeed, the People's Democratic Developmental State cannot hesitate in driving an agenda towards poverty alleviation, building a universal health coverage through the national health insurance, reducing unemployment and providing economic relief to the poor and the unemployed through the universal income guarantee, which uh, at some stage is called the basic income grant. And these are all efforts aimed at tackling the crisis of inequality in our society. And obviously, we will not conclude this message, uh, Comrade Chair, without uh, reflecting and highlighting that as we start uh, this uh, Joslovo uh, month, Obviously, we are declaring and launching our Joslovo Right to Learn campaign as the YCL. And uh, for the 2021, we have declared uh, this year as the year of science, innovation, and infrastructure development, because we believe that we still need to challenge and transform the exclusively bourgeois system of education that has led uh, to some of uh, these uh, challenges of inequality and widening gap of unemployment. So obviously we'll be within this particular three fields as we continue to celebrate and preserve the legacy of Comrade Joslovo, in particular focusing within the Tibet sector, where we expect even curriculum transformation within this sector, because we can't allow a situation where 50 colleges must continue to offer the same courses across the country with close to 256 campuses continuing to offer the same uh, courses without even appreciating the political economy of the society itself where those campuses are located in. And obviously, it will be very wrong not to appreciate that Comrade Joslovo was an internationalist and will remain committed indeed to fight for the democracy in Swaziland and will work very close with the party and all other progressive forces uh, in solidarity with Somaliland and making sure that indeed ultimately it's a recognized state in Africa and globally and continue to pledge solidarity with the people of Palestine against oppressive Israel apartheid regime and obviously Lastly, lastly, being the Western Sahara that continues uh, to suffer at the hands of uh, the monarch of Morocco. And with this, a uh, few words indeed, uh, Comrade uh, NT, we wish our party a very successful commemoration, but again, a successful centenary. And we hope that indeed uh, the leadership that the working class is yearning for the party will be able to understand that it has a need to deepen, advance and uh, defend the National Democratic Revolution. Well, thank you. Man. Thank you very much, Comrade Nico. Um, just two things before I move to Comrade Ace and I'll explain why. Um, the first issue is that um, Comrades should recognize or know that we have put our national chair on leave 
uh, on sick leave to recover as he is gradually recovering and, and getting back on his feet. And our National Deputy Chairperson, Comrade Tulas, uh, will be joining us, but is currently in the NCC. Uh, he also struggles with uh, a voice. I am therefore uh, sit, uh, sitting in for both of them. Uh, the task continues. Uh, I will actually indicate that uh, we were supposed to go to Comrade Bay in Jalija. We are having a heavily loaded day today and uh, Comrade Ace will be joining the NEC of the ANC. We are therefore going to move to the Secretary General of the African National Congress, who will actually give the solidarity message in order for him not to be too late for the NEC meeting. Comrade Ace Mahashule. Thank, thank you, Comrade Joyce, uh, and uh, thanks to the leadership of the Communist Party. Uh, let me just, uh, so that uh, I am in the awkward place, uh, I will just um, thank you, uh, uh, the, the, general, the General Secretary of the South African Communist Party and the entire Central Committee, uh, the, the GS of uh, Young Communists, as well as the leadership of the Young Communists, the General Secretary of the Congress of South African Trade Unions, Comrade Begin Chalunchali, and the entire CEC, all our international guests, the leadership of the ANC present here, and the leaders and the, all comrades and leaders who are here. And let me also recognize the presence of the media the, and our international guests, comrades and comrades. And com on behalf of the African National Congress leadership, receive our fraternal and revolutionary greetings on the 26th anniversary of the life and touch of one of the colossal of our national liberation movement, the late General Secretary of the South African Communist Party. Indeed, uh, we want to thank the leadership of the, Communist, of the South African Communist Party for this appropriate and profound yearly program of appreciating the contribution mm -hmm. of this legendary revolutionary lead to our struggle for the liberation of our people. Being a proletariat and internationalist, his contribution was immensely about the liberation of the whole humanity. I also want to take this opportunity to say Comrade Joe Slovo represents the gallantry of the most vet revolutionaries of the World Progressive Movement. He was a genius of the revolutionary science to bring change not only to the people of our country, but to the whole of the people of the world. On this occasion of the 26th anniversary the celebration of the revolutionary life of this giant of the struggle of our people is taking place amidst events of far-reaching political significance in our country, the African continent and the whole world. Events which, which have evolved to bring the fundamental changes to the present conjuncture of the world political and socio-economic realities. The, I'm a bit worried, we, uh, Comrade uh, SG is muted, and actually the photo that appears is not his, if we can... The historic event is taking place through the birth of our glorious nation. Therefore, this jubilant year, that is also the oldest Marxist Lenin's party on the African continent, and in fact, among the few surviving communist parties in the world. We celebrate this giant leap forward of hundred years of unbroken record of heroic struggle led class, the most advanced detachment led by the most advanced elements of our society and part of our struggle for our socialist future. It is the vanguard which over the years played its central role, a fountain of knowledge guiding our struggle struggle with the scientific revolutionary theory in order to understand the balance of forces 
as we conduct our struggle for the liberation of our people. The relationship between the African National Congress and the South African Communist Party is found in the terrain of our struggle. Its symbolic posture is that of a horse and a war gun. And I want to say today, Comrade Joslov lives and Comrade Joslov will never die. His ideas remain to be the guiding light of our struggle for national liberation. We shall forever treasure his contribution to the struggle of our people against imperialism and colonialism. If you remember the late president of the ANC, Comrade Oliver Tambo, during the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the birth of the South African Communist Party, which was held in Maputo, had to say the following profound words about the importance of this historic relationship. And I quote President O.R. The relationship between ANC and SACP is not an accident of history, nor is it a natural or inevitable development. For, for as we can see, similar relationships have not emerged in the course of liberation struggle in other parts of Africa. To be true to the history, we must concede that there have been difficulties as well as triumphs along the path. As traversing many decades, our two organizations have converged towards a shared strategy of struggle. Ours is not merely a paper alliance created at conference tables and formulated through the signing of documents and representing only an agreement by leaders. Our alliance is the living organism that has grown out of struggle. We have built it out of our separate and common experiences. It has been fertilized by blood of countless heroes, including the blood of Comrade Slovo. Many of them are named and unsung. It has been reinforced by a common determination to destroy the enemy and by our shared belief in the certainty of our victory. So this year is an important year because this year also signifies the 62nd anniversary of the triumph of the Cuban revolution. The Cuban people continue to be an inspiration to our struggle for national liberation to end decades long economic sanctions against the heroic people of, uh, of Cuba. And we also want to take this opportunity to further and continuously say, Comrade Slobo, theoretical formulation of the sunset clause was not cast in stone. It was profoundly out of his ability to guide our movement to navigate the complex challenges of our transition period. He never meant the sunset clauses to remain a permanent feature in the superstructure of our society. Therefore, as we celebrate this life today, we need to take stock of how far we have achieved in taking forward the possibilities presented by the technical maneuvers that he proposed in order for our struggle to continue. I want to conclude by saying, comrades, that on behalf of the National Executive Committee of the ANC, we take this opportunity to thank the South African Communist Party for keeping alive the monumental contribution of this outstanding revolutionary of our movement. The unity of our alliance is the unity of our people and the continuation of our revolution. And I want to say forward with socialism, long live uh, SACP, long live the spirit of Joslovo, long live Amanda, Aluta, continue. Continue. Aluta. Thank you. Thank you very much, SG. And the SG did indicate uh, when we started that he's got a problem with uh, the, the, the technology where he is standing. Um, we want to also apologize because we realize that the, on the visual, it's not his photo uh, that is appearing, uh, just to, uh, to clarify that. 
Uh, but then, uh, as despite the fact that there were a little bit of uh, obstacles, the the gist of the the, the uh, entire message has been received. And thank you very much uh, for uh, that contribution. I will be moving on, comrades, noting that uh, we are tied with time. Um, we will now move to the next solidarity message, which will be given by the General Secretary of COSATU, uh, Comrade Begin Chalin Chali. I've, I've seen that Comrade Begin is here. And I am now handing over to you, Comrade Begin. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade. Uh Joyce and who's the program director for today's meeting. Let me first apologize that you won't see my photos. I've been yeah. trying to log in and it keeps telling me that uh, the, the, the strength is very, very weak and I might be cut it off. So in the case I'm cut it off, please uh, uh, accept my apologies, not intentional. <laughs> And then firstly, let me greet you and the leadership of the party collective, the members of the Central Committee of the party, the leaders of the ANC led today by the ANC Secretary, Secretary General, members of COSATU might be present here, and the members of the CC on behalf of the Federation. We want to take this opportunity once more to appreciate the efforts and the coordination that is made by the Communist Party in the commemorating and celebrating the life and the contribution made by Comrade Joshua. This appreciation is extended to the family of Comrade Joshua, who at all times without fail, they've been represented when we gathered to celebrate this event. Secondly, Comrade Joshua want to register our condolences to all the families who have lost their lives due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This goes to the families of the frontline workers who put their lives on the line to save ours. We want also to take this opportunity to salute the leaders of the party, of the ANC and of COSAT who have lost their lives in the recent past between the last time we're gathering to commemorate the life of Comrade Joslo. Yes, indeed, this appreciation goes to the millions of workers who have lost their life, lost their income, and want to express our sympathy, particularly to those workers whose collective bargaining rights are under attack. And we want to say here today, we hope the party will join us in dealing this, doing this, that will defend the rights of all workers, irrespective of their affiliation when they are under attack, particularly the, so the workers in the public sectors. As we meet here to commemorate the 26th anniversary of the passing of Comrade Joshua, at a very difficult time when the country is dealing with the deadly pandemic, this commemoration takes place in a crisis situation where the role of the vanguard of the working class is more necessary than ever before. We remember Comrade Joslovo not as a perfect, vicious person, but as a fearless, thoughtful, disciplined, and ethical revolutionary. These are the characters we need at the complicated and uncertain uh, time. The working class is bleeding and frustrated because they have been betrayed. The ruling elite have lost their legitimacy and have, been, and have been doing everything in their power to destroy our democracy and replace it with the mafia state. This occasion also arrives at a time when our national democratic revolution has entered the most dangerous and difficult period as the component of the working class were looking at the South African Communist Party, the SACP, to provide strategic and tactical guidance to help the working class charter their way out of this current crisis. The persistent capitalist and health crisis is destroying our people's livelihood. Unemployment levels shot up to more than 40%, wages have been severely depressed, 
and the working family's living standard has been reduced. The capitalist bosses are increasing the, employ the employment of new production technology and reducing the number of employed workers. Those who remain employed face intensifying working conditions and ever deepening exploitation in our country. Employment does not mean an exit from the vice grip of poverty, since millions of workers are the working poor, while the capitalist bosses are accumulating wealth and taking out of the country. On this occasion of remembering this revolutionary and theoretician, we hope that the party will deeply reflect and use the occasion to provide some answers to the question thrown up by the current challenges facing our revolution. We need the SACP to lead the, the quest to build up socialist foundation of our economy and rescue the working class from the life of brutal survival and help, helplessness. The SACP General Secretary Comrade Blade Zimande said in addressing our COSATU 8 National Congress, and I want to quote him, unless the working class leads, working programmatically and in action with the widest range of mass of the urban and the rural poor, unless this is done, he said, the promises of 1994 will collapse into the agenda of a narrow self-enrichment and general confusion. The SACP is prepared to work with all potential patriotic and progressive forces. But one thing is clear, the bourgeoisie and the emergence bourgeoisie separately and together are incapable of charting a way out of the persisting crisis of the undevelopment the working class must end, close quote. These words remain haunting because the working class is still not leading. The question is why, and what is the vanguard of the working class planning to do about it? The SACP needs to be bold and start pointing, providing leadership, or it will be forgotten by history and populist movement of all strand will emerge to fill the vacuum. We have abandoned our tools of analysis and we have adopted the ideologies or tool used by the elite to further its own interests. These are the daily presented to the public as a natural law and mechanism for social and economic progress. We remember Comrade Joslovo as a leader who was grounded in the Marxist philosophy that was clear about the natural antagonism between the rich and the rest of us. We need to know that the interest of the rich are not our interest. The truth of the rich are not our truths. If you want evidence, look at the impact of the neoliberalism on the working class, the deindustrialization that was unleashed by gear, the offensive against the collective bargaining. Today, we speak in folk tongues when it comes to this contradiction. This is where we need the Vanguard Party of Comrade Joslov to lead from the front. COVID-19 has exposed the crisis of capitalism and we are issuing the call to the Vanguard of the working class to unite the working class and work with us to develop a systematic program on ideological education and training. Let the party lead the mass mobilization program, yet responding to unfolding socioeconomic crisis involving progressive mass-based organization in particular, and the progressive civil social structures in general. The message from the working, from the workers, Comrade Joyce is simple. If the workers are expected to lead, let the vanguard, their vanguard needs to point the direction and lead from the front before it is too late. Thank you very much. And thank you for allowing us to be part of this process. Amanda. Away too. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Peggy. Message of solidarity, well received as well. And comrades, you, you may have 
notice that comrades due to the occasion and a, a comrade that was celebration, celebrating today have actually uh, pre prepared themselves to that level. And we so much and sincerely appreciate all the messages that you have received today. We will be moving on um, in our uh, fast pace, uh, of course. And now we will allow Comrade Martin Doni. I hope he is here, um, yes, uh, who will be uh, representing the Joe Slover Foundation. And now we are actually doing our actual launch of the White Ribbon. Uh, Comrade Martin, are you ready? This is the campaign against gender-based violence. Uh, it's a most important campaign. It's a white ribbon campaign that we have initiated ourselves as the Communist Party, COSATU, and the Joe Slovo Foundation. Uh, Comrade Martin on this day will also be uh, launching that. Over to you, Comrade Martin. Okay, comrades. Uh, I think we, we, we will have a, we have a, a technical problem uh, on comrade Martin, and also we've got a problem of time. And therefore, uh, uh, along that, I'll just indicate that the essence of the white ribbon uh, is a Joe. It is a Joe Slovo Foundation, the Kosatu and the SACP joint campaign. We are launching it today, and it's, we are going. Um, we will be going through it the whole year and, and in the future. It is a part of our global white ribbon campaign, and it is within the spirit of the party of the internationalism. As the party leadership, we have men and women who are committed to eradicate the gender-based violence. Comrades will remember that it's not only a woman's thing, it's both female cadres and male cadres coming together to eradicate this uh, terrible thing of gender-based violence. It is not an exclusive woman's issue, it is a people's issue. And therefore, we definitely have to soldier on and ensure that we eradicate it completely and wipe it out of our societies. Uh, the interpersonal violence and gender-based in particular have no place in our society. And we definitely have to really get rid of it. Uh, that is, we have to build a, a society that is based on a respect and human solidarity. And that all forms of antisocial destructive behavior should be rooted out because we definitely are not going to, to allow it. We need to, active, to be actively involved now to remove this patriarchal an oppressive aggression uh, that have no place, definitely. We will still be, it is a very important campaign. It is a campaign that will uh, take us forward. We want to also thank the Gender Commission of the South African Communist Party, led by Comrade Bulelo, that has been playing a significant role, working with COSATU, working with uh, uh, the, the, the Joe Slovo on the White Ribbon. We are, of course, having a lot of campaigns that we are working with the Women's League of the African National Congress as well. And therefore, we invite all the cadres of the movement to be part of this very important campaign to eradicate the gender-based violence. We don't need it. It's not something that belongs to us. We don't blame anybody for going to deal with it. All of us time. Uh, looking at all, all the time that uh, was lost at the beginning, comrades will have to move on. Um, it's unfortunate we can't have our, our, our uh, uh, the songs, revolutionary songs, that will motivate us. Uh, but we will then uh, have to move to the main message. For our main message, comrades, we'll have the presentation of this message by the South African Communist Party General Secretary of the 14th Congress, that is Dr. Blayton Zimande, who will be giving us the 26th anniversary message of the commemoration of Comrade Joe Slovo. Comrade General Secretary, 
If you are ready, I'm handing over to you. Amanda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, National Treasurer, Comrade uh, Joyce uh, Mroy Mrupa, who is also our program director today. Let me also greet our first Deputy General Secretary, Comrade Sorima Paila, and our second uh, Deputy General Secretary, Comrade Chris Chair Mataku, the Secretary General of the ANC and other members of the National Executive Committee of the ANC who have joined us. The COSATU General Secretary, Comrade Peggy Jarijali, and all CEC leaders and leaders of affiliates of COSATU. Our host provincial secretary, Comrade Jacob Mamabulu, uh, provincial secretary of the party in Gauteng. The national secretary of our YCL, Comrade Dini Gondini. Other leaders of the mass democratic movement who are with us on this occasion, as well as members of the media who have joined us. Uh, international guests and participants who are with us today, and all the comrades who have joined us, and all other South Africans who may also be watching and be part of this important event. Uh, Slovo <clears throat> dedicated his entire life from a young age of 16 to the cause of the liberation and social emancipation of the working class and the overwhelming majority of the oppressed in our country. This for him included ending male domination and oppression of women and girls. In short, he was a combatant to confront and defeat patriarchy and stood for the building of a non-sexist society. Slovo's dedication to the transformation of South Africa to be a non-racial and non-sexist democratic country did not end with, with his death. Comrade Slovo was a committed communist dedicated to our struggle to attain a socialist South Africa because he, together with us, believed that capitalism can never be the system upon which to address the many challenges facing our country. Only a socialist path will best be able to fully address the needs of the workers and the poor of our country. In celebrating his life, therefore, we also commit to take this struggle further. One of the largest graveyards in South Africa, which is the Avalon Cemetery in Soweto, the largest township in the country, which is now home to over 1 million people, is where Comrade Slovo was laid to rest. The white only colonial government of South Africa created Soweto in the 1930s as part of its racist human settlement policy to create black townships, also pushing away black people from major towns and cities. During that time, the British monarchy as the head of state of the colonial South Africa, a subordinate of, of Britain as a colonial power, were part of the whole machinery of the colonization and oppression of our people. The apartheid regime from 1948 consolidated this segregationist agenda through, amongst others, the creation of the Bantustans and later the creation of what they refer to as the tricameral parliament for Indians and Gallats. Slovo's choice, therefore, to be laid at the Avalon Cemetery was part of his commitment whilst alive to breaking the barriers of racial segregation. But he wanted to continue that even in his, in his death symbolically through his gravesite at Avalon Cemetery. When Comrade Joslov was 15 years old, he left school to look for work, compelled to do so by his working class and poor background. That was when his lifelong contribution to the struggle of workers' rights, the struggle for liberation and democracy in our country began for him. Two important developments happened or occurred a year after his employment as a dispatch clerk for a, a, a chemist, shaping a lifelong dedication to the struggle. 
When he was 16, Joslov was elected a shop steward of the National Union of Distributive Workers. He became involved in leading a strike that won workers' demands. But he was at the same time gravely disturbed when black workers from the same workplace were excluded from the benefits derived from the gains of that strike. In the same year, 1942, Comrade Slovo joined the Communist Party to wage the struggle against the racist capitalist and colonial regime. He remained unquestionable lawyer to the struggle for liberation and the struggle for socialism over five decades from 1942 until his death on this day in 1995. During the Second World War, Comrade Slovo deliberately overstated his age so he could go to fight against Nazism and fascism. Upon his return from the war, he gained admission at the University of the Wettwatersrand based on what was called life assessment, having left school at the age of 15 without completing the equivalent of what we know as metric today. He was admitted to university without metric, but based on some kind of life assessment, which today we call recognition of prior learning. It was at the university where he met his wife, Comrade Ruth Fest, a communist cater in her own right. And also it was at Witz that Comrade Joe Slovo met with Nelson Mandela as students. Slovo excelled at university, winning himself a degree in law. He started working as a lawyer with more focus on defending the revolutionaries and combatants of the liberation struggle in South Africa after obtaining his law degree. Comrade Slovo was one of the key leaders of our struggle, a great theoretician, as it has been said, a strategist and a tactician. He was involved not only in intellectual activity, but also in the realm of practical action to change the world for the better. He was a founder member of the Congress of Democrats following the burning of the Communist Party under the Suppression of Communism Act of 1950. Together with his wife, Ruth First, who was also the daughter of the SACP's national treasurer, Comrade Julius First, Slovo was amongst the first to be banned under the draconian legislation of the Suppression of Communism Act. As a communist cater, then functioning in the underground organization of the SACP, but active in the Congress of Democrats, Comrade Slovo took part in the formulation of the Freedom Charter in 1955. However, because he was a banned person, he could not attend the Congress of the People Gathering where the Freedom Charter was adopted in Cape Town. The resilient Slovo observed the proceedings from a nearby rooftop using binoculars. Following the adoption of the Freedom Charter, he was arrested together with 155 other comrades for the role he played in that. During the trial of the 156 comrades in what became known as the treason trial, Slovo simultaneously formed part of the defense legal team. He was both an accused and a lawyer at the same time. The charges against him and several others were dropped in 1958, and for the rest of the accused, the charges were dropped in 1961. That was, however, short-lived because Comrade Slovo and others were arrested in 1960 during the state of emergency declared by the apartheid regime after the Sharpeville massacre in 1961, after the Sharpeville massacre on the 21st of March. When the joint SACP and ANC military wing of Kondo was formed in 1961, Slovo, together with former President Nelson Mandela, co-founded the High Command of MK with the SACP headquarters at Lily's Leaf Farm as the operations center. At this point, comrades, I think as the South African Communist Party, we must say this, as we remember Comrade Slovo, the co-founder with Comrade Nelson Mandela as the two first commanders on Kondo Sisu, 
We don't take kindly to the name of Mkondo Wesizwe being used for factionalist behavior in the movement. That's why we call upon the MKMVA together with the MK Council, emergent from one organization, as has been decided by the ANU and supported by us, to preserve the legacy of MK. If MK was factionalist, we would not be where we are today. So none of the names, whether it's MK, MVA, or whatever, can be used to actually pursue narrow factionalist agendas that are dividing the organization. In memory of Joe Slovo, we must not allow that. Those who say, who are we as the SACP to make such statements, we, we, we must and we will say so, because we are the co-founders of Mkondo Esizu. So it is very important that we do not forget that, that MK was never factionalist, and therefore MK MVA cannot act in a manner that, that, that divides the organization. When the apartheid regime arrested our leaders at Lily's Live Farm, leading to the Rivonia trial between 1963 and 1964, Slovo was on an external mission outside the country. He had to remain given developments inside the country, which led to him being in forced exile for 27 years, performing the work of the SACP, ANC, and MK. Slovo was involved together with other comrades in producing some of the key documents of our struggle. We have already mentioned the Freedom Charter, but also other documents like the ANC strategy and tactics adopted at Morogoro in 1969, as well as what was known as the Green Book and other major SACP documents to, to name but just a few. Comrade Slovo formed part of the ANC's Revolutionary Council established immediately after the ANC Morogoro Conference, as well as <coughs> the Political Military Council that replaced the Revolutionary Council in 1983, made up of leaders drawn from the ANC, SACP, and SACT. Two years later, in 1985, Comrade Joslovo was elected as the first white person to serve on the ANC's National Executive Committee. The same year, in 1985, Comrade Joslovo became the MK Chief of Staff and the following year in 1986, after the passing away of Comrade Moses Mabida, it became in 1986, sorry, not 1996, he became the SACP's general secretary. He was succeeded by Comrade Chris Arne, coincidentally, but not accidentally, in both his two roles as MK Chief of Staff and as general secretary of the SACP in 1987 and 1991, respectively. At our first Congress of the SACP back on South African soil in 1991, Comrade Slovo was elected as the national chairperson of the SACP after Comrade Chris was elected the general secretary. Following our first democratic election in 1994, President Nelson Mandela appointed Comrade Slovo, who was elected as the member of parliament to serve as the first minister of housing in a democratic dispensation. Slovo served our people with dedication. But another matter that we, we normally do not talk much about in the life of Joe Slovo is that Comrade Slovo was a key player in our transition to democracy. He was a key negotiator and participant representing the SACP in the negotiations at Kempton Park at the World Trade Center including the multi-party talks that led to the 1994 democratic breakthrough. He also penned the paper titled Negotiations, What Room for Compromise, which generated a lot of debates and controversy, I dare say, in the movement, as it was a paper that to some provocatively proposed for the first time and publicly the idea of a government of national unity. This 
document led to a huge debate within the movement. But it also, together with those debates, made a huge contribution in creating some consensus, though there never was a 100% consensus, on what was to be the movement's approach to some key aspects of negotiations, of, of its negotiation strategy, as well as how was transition to democracy going to look like in our country. This year also marks the centenary of the founding of our party, founded as the Communist Party of South Africa and in 1953 renamed the South African Communist Party, founded in July 1921. We are indeed commemorating Comrade Joslovo under vastly different conditions. Today, we face new challenges and multiple crises of the globally prevailing capitalist system. Like Joe Slovo, who rose to the occasion in his time, we are also called upon to rise to the occasion at this point in time. As we celebrate and remember Comrade Joe Slovo 26 years after his death, we are in the midst of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is surging with a massive devastation of, on life and the economy. We wish as the SACP to take this opportunity to express our most heartfelt condolences to all the families that have lost their loved ones, including those who have lost their loved ones due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We also salute and we join Begin Chalinjad, uh, Comrade Nopala Wekosato fully in saluting our frontline workers, including those who have lost their own lives in the cause of duty, trying to save the lives of our people. And we also salute all those other workers in essential services who have risked infection to service the people of this land, including the police, the teachers, workers in the security in industry, and many others. And indeed, Comrade Greg, we want to assure you as the SACP that we don't support any threat to the current labor relations dispensation and the collective bargaining system as the Communist Party who have expressed solidarity with you on that and that we dare not take any action as government to actually put in jeopardy this collective bargaining system which was sacrificed for through huge struggles by South Africa's working class. The COVID-19 pandemic has also deepened the pre-existing economic crisis of the capitalist system. The social indicators of this crisis of the capitalist system include the persisting high levels of inequality, unemployment, and poverty. Accompanying the worsening economic crisis are also the multiple crises of what we call social reproduction, affecting millions of poor and working class families who are struggling to make ends meet, including very high levels of interpersonal violence in society. At the, head, at the heart of the crisis of this social reproduction is the new pandemic of gender-based violence that our country is experiencing. And on this day, we further commit ourselves and through our white ribbons that we are wearing to continue the struggle to confront this pandemic of gender-based violence. The other crisis we are facing as we commemorate the 26th anniversary of Comrade Joslovo is caused, that is caused by patterns of capitalist production and consumption is the catastrophic crisis of climate change global warming, ecological destruction, and environmental degradation. We've also already committed ourselves through at the meeting of our last central committee to wage the struggle against environmental degradation as the SACP, working with our people and with progressive NGOs who are working in this sector. Like Joe Slovo, we must consistently strive to put our people first before and above profits. 
This is a key task that the Central Committee in December at its plenary placed to be the party's program of action for this year, our year of centenary, 2021. To succeed, the theme of putting people first, but needs the people at its center, mobilized in action to achieve a change for the better. This is one reason we also refer to this year, or the Central Committee has decided that 2021, our centenary year, must be the year of mass activism by the working class and the poor to put people before profits. However, we cannot go back to where we were before COVID-19. We cannot do things and mobilize in old ways in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. We need to forge alternative forms of mass mobilization and mass activism, considering not only the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the general crisis of the capitalist system. We have to find new and creative ways to do intense work amongst the people whilst observing COVID-19 health protocols. COVID-19 is indeed the most immediate threat to our revolution, to all South Africans and every person who is in our country. We therefore reiterate our support for the COVID-19 preventative measures announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa on the 28th of December, 2020. We call upon every person and family in South Africa to adhere to the COVID-19 preventative regulations, whether those people or South Africans are South African or not. The SACP also commits to play its part in forging a broad global left campaign for the equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. This campaign must seek to challenge the dominant profit logic driven by big pharmaceutical companies. In the same vein, we want to welcome the stance taken by the World Health Organization to make the COVID-19 vaccine a global public good rather than a profit-driven imperative. In our country, the government should ensure that the production and or sourcing of the COVID-19 vaccine is not subordinated to private wealth accumulation interests. There must be no space left for corruption and state capture in the sourcing of the COVID-19 vaccine, just as it must be the case in every government program, department, or public entity. The SACP also today reiterates its support for the progressive thrust of the government's economic reconstruction and recovery plan as supported by labor, business, and community constituencies at NETLEC. Continuing consultation to strengthen this plan is essential. And that should include adopting targets to reduce inequality, unemployment, and poverty. It's an important matter this for the SACP to explain that firstly, this economic reconstruction and recovery plan is threatened by two processes. One is the neoliberal austerity agenda, cutting the budget for social services, as well as the state capture corruption networks. That's why as the SACP we say, neither a neoliberal austerity agenda or state capture corruption networks are capable of taking us forward. We need to forge a developmental path that will benefit the overwhelming majority of our people. Secondly, we are saying as the Communist Party, we call for the inclusion of economic measures of reduction of poverty, inequality, and unemployment as part of how we measure our economy. It is not enough just to measure our economy in terms of GDP growth. We say this as the South African Communist Party because we know that indeed GDP may grow, and it has happened in the past, yet at the same time, poverty, inequality, and unemployment is worsening. 
In other words, GDP growth is not a reliable measure of how our economy is performing in relation to, to the overwhelming majority of our people. We want economic indicators that talk directly to poverty reduction, reduction of inequality, and reduction of unemployment. We also wish to take this opportunity to underline and commit ourselves to the ongoing challenge of transforming the financial sector. Transforming this financial sector must also include prescribed investments and the building of a developmental banking sector. We will continue to campaign for the diversification of the financial sector generally and the banking sector in particular. Our banking system is wholly inappropriate for a developing country. That's why as the SACP, we are also saying in remembering Comrade Joslovo, our banking system must also include a strong and dynamic public banking sector as well as a cooperative banking sector. The SACP also supports the correct focus on infrastructure development as a cornerstone in the economic reconstruction and recovery strategy. In fact, we wish to see the resources, in particular public resources, allocated to infrastructure development to be increased. However, we want to strongly caution against the financialization of infrastructure development and other problematic methods of finance that advance the privatization agenda. In the same vein, as we have said, we must emphasize this. We want to caution very strongly as the SACP against neoliberalism and its austerity agenda. Prescribed investments, sometimes called prescribed assets, must be pursued, and this policy must aim to unlock the trillions of rands accumulated from our economy, but held in liquid cash in what is tantamount to an investment strike, primarily by the financial sector. For instance, research has shown us that whilst in many countries, around 15% of pension and provident funds are invested in infrastructure. In South Africa, only 2% of pension and provident funds are invested in infrastructure. This must change. And yet there are monies that are just sitting, some of them squandered by middlemen. Yes, they are often men, not women, who are actually using these monies that are not being invested for their own narrow accumulation interests. That's why we are saying it is important, therefore, to bring financial capital under democratic discipline by government in the public interest if we are to meet our national development goals. Today, as I move towards concluding, we are also officially launching, as our national treasurer has said, together with COSATU and the Joslovo Foundation, the White Ribbon Campaign, white ribbon campaign against sexual harassment and all other forms of gender-based violence and oppression. Our revolution will not be complete without gender transformation and universal social emancipation, goals that Josh Lovo strongly stood for. The law and its enforcement must be strengthened within the framework of human rights to end gender-based violence. Lastly, but not the least, we also take this opportunity to express our solidarity with the people of Sutherland struggling for democracy, the people of Zimbabwe who are facing a monumental crisis of the economy. One has to just look at what is happening at the Bight Bridge, just to see how serious the economic crisis is, in particular in Zimbabwe. Also, we are pledging our solidarity with the people of Western Sahara and again strongly condemning Donald Trump's wanting to sell the, the legitimate struggle of the Westerns, of the Sahara people by saying he is recognizing Moroccan sovereignty over the Western Sahara. We reject that. It is illegal and it's also against the resolutions of the United Nations.
the sooner we see the back of Donald Trump, the better, so that we can be able to create hopefully better conditions for to pursue a progressive international international struggle. Of course, you, U.S. presidents are U.S. presidents, irrespective of which party they come from. But Donald Trump must go down as one of the worst presidents ever to preserve a riot over the United States. We're also expressing our solidarity with the Palestinian people against the brutality and oppression by the apartheid Israeli regime. And also we say to the people of Cuba, Bolivia, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, we stand together with you in your right to pursue the economic and political path that is chosen by your people and not imposed from outside. As the SACP, we stand with the oppressed and exploited in the whole world so that we can have a free and a better world. And there is no better way of honoring and remembering Joslovo than by reinforcing and recommitting ourselves to internationalism. Amandla, long live the memory of Comrade Joslovo. Long live. Long live. Long live. Thank you very much, Sabonga. Yes, uh, much appreciated. This fulfills this day in totality, and we really appreciate uh, the delivering of this message on behalf of the 14th Congress of the SACP. We are reaching our conclusion, comrade, at a very high note with that message Comrade GS has just uh, delivered and all messages that you received today. Much appreciated and grateful. Uh, long live the spirit of Comrade Joe Slovo. And we will definitely work uh, to make sure that we, we, we root out the gender-based violence in our society. We will then sum it up, close the day, and hand over to Comrade uh, DGS in the light that Comrade uh, Deputy National Chairperson could not join. The Comrade uh, Soli Mapaila, the Deputy uh, General Secretary, will be able to close for us. I can see Comrade Soli shaking the head. Comrade Chris. We have our deputy general secretaries. They will negotiate amongst themselves. One of them must take the podium. Uh, over to you, uh, Comrade Chris Mashaku. Uh, since Comrade Soli is sending over to you, is giving me a sign that it's you who's doing it. <laughs> no, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Joyce, uh, our national treasurer, uh, who's also the program director for today. <clears throat> Yeah, I think what we should do on the occasion of the commemoration of uh, Joe Slovo, um, acknowledge the messages that have been given to us by the SG of the African National Congress, Comrade uh, Esma uh, <clears throat> the General Secretary of COSATU, Comrade Bekin Chalin Chali. But crowning it all is a very clear and very elusive message that the General Secretary on behalf of the 14th Congress Central Committee delivered. He, the, I think the most important thing that he was pointing out, uh, mandated by the Central Committee, uh, is that uh, what we take in the year of the centenary of the party, the 100 years of existence of the party, the kinds of cadres that have come out of the party, such as uh, Joe Slovo, Moses Kotane, Moses Mabida, and others, we highlight the notion of putting people before profit. And therefore, all of our structures, uh, <laughs> including the broad national liberation movement, um, will do themselves um, very well if they join in the campaigns that the party has been outlining. The anti-GPV campaign, the white Zobin campaign is, is in itself a very important campaign uh, that we should be unfolding, uh, all of us uh, in the movement, uh, so that, uh, as you said, Comrade Joyce, we eradicate the sketch 
uh, in our society uh, because it is an anti-people um, sketch that characterizes uh, a society today. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, what we should be taking uh, also out of these presentations that have been made um, is that in the year of the centenary of the party, party cadres, party structures, uh, and the progressive national liberation movement are going to be even called to do and uh, contribute significantly towards putting people first. In the year of the local government elections, the uh, national liberation movement, uh, the ANC, COSATU, the party should be getting closer to our people, closer uh, to the ground and connect with it. And as such, we want to appreciate and embrace and uh, thank all the presenters that have uh, presented, uh, the alliance leaders that have presented, and in particular, the main message uh, by the general secretary of the party, Aluta Continua Venceremos. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Choice. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks very much. Long live the spirit of Comrade Joe Slobo. Long live. And down with the gender-based violence. Down. Down. Man. Comrades, that, that was uh, closing and rounding up the program. This actually marks the end of our program. Thank you to everyone who joined from all various platforms. We know that those that are in Facebook, that those are in Zoom, and we could not actually load everyone else because everyone want, saw this day as significant and wanted to be part of it. Those that could not join, I know that uh, there was also a TV, I, I think it's 404, uh, this message I saw here. And thank you very much, comrades, for keeping up the spirit of comrade Joe Slobo. Amanda. Amanda. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Comrade Joyce. Just to our media colleagues, uh, we have a question from Natasha Piri. We will take it just after ending the session. Uh, I've already committed my pilot to take the question. I will share the question with you, uh, Comrade uh, Africa. Uh, you will take it on record so that they can use it in the news bulletin. Thank you so much. Okay. Do Comrade Alex, are there, do you need some comrades to remain or we can uh, leave those that were smart? Yes, uh, if I can have yourself, Mapaila and Chris Matlako and Jenny Schreiner, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Stembiso Bengu remaining. We should okay. remain with the, with the SABC team so that we can take their question. May I also ask uh, Dr. Bengu to uh, end the broadcast on our social media platform. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Papa Comrades. Good luck. Keep Thank safe, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thanks, Papa. We you wish you the best. Much.